Roland, Brabec. Ege? Ja? Ege? Brabec. Roland, Brabec. That's Croatian. So Rabbit is a Croatian name. Even the Germans have problems to, to spell it right. <laughs> they say Prabek. I was playing my whole life uh, as, a, as a youth footballer in, in Frankfurt in a small club, very, very successful club, even though very small. And the whole youth, and uh, I was there for two years in the first uh, team. And then I started to study sports science and sports medicine. And uh, then I learned a lot about training methods and, and stuff like this. And then I found out that after playing five, six years in the those days, was it the fourth division, third division also, playing there was really boring for me. <laughs> uh, it was almost the same every, every time uh, during your training sessions. So... I started to train a youth team, 10 year old kids, and um, I loved it, really loved it. And so I uh, started to, to train only the, the youth team, quit uh, myself as a footballer and um, made the, the first license, the second license, whatever it uh, needed. And then uh, I have to say that I then had like my first yeah, job, real job in, in football was FSO Frankfurt. In the youth, I started as an under-15 coach there, then under-17, under-19. At the end, I was responsible for the whole youth there. And then, as it is in life, you know, sometimes you you need luck. Also, I was coaching uh, the son of Jürgen Klopp at FSO Frankfurt. And then Jürgen was uh, visiting and watching the 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 trainings, the sessions uh, uh, frequently and um, then he brought me to Mainz and uh, Mainz was like, let's say, my first real job in football, the only job in football. So I didn't do anything else before I was also working like a barkeeper in, in restaurants and bars and coffees. Yeah, as a student, you know, all this. And uh, yeah, I was their coach on the 17th. Two years under 23, then I was assistant coach uh, in the first team with Thomas Tuchel. And uh, from there on, I went to the national team under 18, under 19, worked there with Christian Siege also. Great experience, met a lot of a lot of great footballers like uh, Emre Can, uh, Andre Terstegen, uh, Romeo Rüdiger, players like this, Timo Werner. Um, it was really nice to work with them. and to get uh, this experience, but it's it's a different kind of, of work because you just meet, um, I don't know, every four, six weeks for a few days. You got uh, like a training camp or maybe um, like a national team game. And that was, yeah, not, not the way I really like to work with a team day by day. So I quit and went to St. Pauli, uh, second division then, second Bundesliga. First as assistant coach, then yeah, Michael Fronsek, the first team coach was sucked, and then I took over. So that was my like uh, step into the uh, professional football, and from there on to Switzerland, to Luzern, then back to FSO Frankfurt, and then back to Switzerland, Vaduz, Luxembourg as well, in Niederkorn, and now here I am in Denmark, Esper. <laughs> I heard about the club um, because you know when you when you work as a football coach you you, you also look uh, across the borders and um, I heard about SPA, I heard about uh, the club because they also played Euroleague. Um, yeah, if you're interested in football, you you know about these things. But I didn't really know about the club. Uh, I knew where it was located or where it is located. And I knew that uh, they, they won the championship in Denmark several times in the cup and that it's a, it's a big historical club here in Denmark. Um, but when I got the call from, uh, from the owners, uh, I was uh, really uh, into it because I think it's a, it's a great opportunity and a great chance for me and also for the club like to bring, bring, bring this team back into the Super League. I think that, as I said, the club and the people here deserve that. And 
for me, it would be a great honor to bring that club back into Superliga. And that's why it was a like easy decision to, to go here and, and to start work here. When you lose the ball, that means black, you can only you, you just need to touch it. That's like a like a lost ball. Then I play the ball to this side, you two follow and two purple, then we have a four against two on the other side. Easy. Okay? Three minutes. I would say that uh, what's important and also my style uh, is uh, like pressing high, uh, finding uh, moments to press high uh, immediately. Um, and then also when you lose the ball, have like uh, immediately the impulse to, to go into game pressing. And um, that is something that the owners uh, want to see it's it's part of the philosophy and it's also part of my philosophy so I think it, it, it fits really good but also we need to have possession when we especially play at home you need to have possession you need to find um, and create chances to score it's not only about uh, defensive behavior you also need to know what to do when you are in possession and uh, Positioning play has to be great, um, and you need to create chances. That's that's uh, that's also important. And also, uh, as a person, but more as a coach, like the players to understand why we are doing certain things. I'm not that coach who just says we do it like this, and the players need to follow. It's also that I like them to understand because I think that if players or people understand why you asking for stuff or asking them to do things, then they are much better in that. So this is also philosophy, like being communicative, uh, um, explain things uh, and like, uh, yeah, give them responsibility also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mobile, mobile, mobile. I think that um, when I started here, I have to say that it was a really, really difficult situation because uh, of the things that happened during the summer with the former coach and everything around this. There was no structure at all in the locker room, in the team. And because of that, there was no structure on the pitch as well. So we had to do like a preparation during the season. And um, this is... Uh, of course, very difficult because you need to, to make points, even though you need to prepare everything on the pitch and, and around the pitch. So it was a really, really tough time with a lot of uh, conversation, explanation and, and really working hard on the pitch for long periods. And uh, now I think that uh, the players really understand what I'm asking for. Now we have a structure in the locker room and also a structure on the pitch. And I think that maybe not most important, but very, very important that we created, let's say, some kind of winning mentality. So maybe it's not seen through the results, but we have like the feeling, the coaching staff has the feeling that the, the players are now not satisfied anymore with winning one game or performing good. So they are now willing to go and get, uh, give everything to, to win also the second game or the next game. So I think that's a, that's a big development and really, really important if you, if you want to be successful. I think that since I arrived here in Aspect, uh, I could feel that the club and the city and the people living here in the city or and especially the people working at the club and around the club uh, 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 really, really looking forward to, to, to see the team in the Superliga. Uh, you can feel that uh, the club uh, and the facilities and the stadium with everything that belongs to the club, that this is like Superliga. This is not first division. So I think that the aim, the goal should be for sure going back to Superliga. This year, because of that big change that happened uh, in summer because new investors new ideas new philosophy of the whole club means that this year we need to prepare everything for for the next season so next season when we start in summer not everything will be new again the philosophy is clear 
uh, hopefully a lot of players will stay here so they will already know what I'm asking for so we don't have that big change also not in the locker room and uh, then we maybe prepared everything not just in the team or around the team also in the club to perform much better next season even though for sure also in the next season will be at least four or five clubs who want to go uh, to the Superliga as well. If you look at the Superliga right now, Valle and uh, Sonoyuska are the last two teams. If they go to the first division and maybe Lyngby or Helsinger stay, then we, maybe Federicia or whoever, uh, then you for sure have five teams that are able and willing to, to go to the Superliga. It's going to be tough. So we need to do everything this season to prepare really good for the next. And also, we, we need to have a like, good, really good scouting system to, to bring those players here to Esbjerg who are really able to work hard and, and to, to, to bring us uh, back to, to the division, to the league that I think the club and the city deserves. Hello, good morning. Alles klar? The city, uh, the city of Esbjerg is, is really nice for me to live in. I live in the center of the city um, and um, I, re I really love, love um, how, how easy it is to get in touch with people in Esbjerg, how easy it is to, to find uh, nice places to go, to have a coffee or to, to, to eat. Um, I feel that there's like a, let's say, big connection between the people living in Esbjerg and the club. It's like a, let's say, sporty city because we don't have only football here. We have ice hockey and, and handball as well. And, uh, and I can feel and I can see that the people are really into sports. So for me, it's really, really fun living here. And I liked it from the first day on. Um, and the mentality of the people, especially here in the club, was great. You know, everybody was, was able and, and was willing to help. From the start, so uh, I feel really, really good here in Esbjerg, and I hope I can stay for for a long time.